Some people are frightened uh, a little bit, or they think they'll be frightened of reality shifts. Um, I recommend just keep asking, how good can it get? And recognize that we are guided always by higher levels of consciousness, our own and those that we work with. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world right now. Our guest today is Cynthia Sue Larson. Cynthia shifts reality and jumps timelines. She teaches how to live alternate parallel lives. Cynthia is a physicist, author of several books, and the founder of Reality Shifters. This is her story, and this is her passion, Cynthia. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you, Louisa. Honored to be. I've seen some of your interviews, and they're just incredible. I I guess let's get started. You're an expert on, well, I've spoken about reality shifters, but how do we jump into the reality we desire, the timeline we desire? Well, we're doing it all the time. Most of us don't notice it. So it's a natural thing, just like birds fly with quantum abilities. and quant- We have these special superpowers that we're not very conscious of. So the reality shifting that's constantly going on involves the fact that we are at our core pure consciousness we notice that sometimes we get powerful effects like the placebo effect and so forth Um, but in terms of reality shifting um, we can just basically intend for example tonight i'll get a good night's sleep even though you know you're you only are going to get a few hours sleep at most and you might not call that a good night's sleep but if you tell yourself tonight this will be the best sleep ever Um, this sort of result afterward has been proven scientifically um, to be true that just through that intention and that necessity and that focus alone people are able to do things such as heal and we have a lot of research about um, sleeping well and cognitively functioning great on very little sleep just because the the folks who were telling themselves i got enough sleep i got i slept great they actually do beautifully well on all kinds of cognitive tests and so forth so um, i'm making it kind of simple because the kind of stuff that i've experienced it sounds really out there (laughs) and then people might think that's impossible well the concept is simple that we are at our core basically dreaming this reality and that's kind of really what's going on our you know, senses work a little differently than we think they do. I'm I'm talking calmingly to people's left brain so they can kind of go with me here. <laughs> if we're just making a wild, crazy leap into the unknown. Some people are frightened uh, a little bit or they think they'll be frightened of reality shifts. Um, I recommend just keep asking, how good can it get? And recognize that we are guided always by higher levels of consciousness, our own and those that we work with. What I notice on my spiritual journey as I learn levels of intentionality and learning and choosing to be in the best service to others, dedicating myself to higher principles that I care most about. Um, This is a really, it's a spiritual journey. But as I do that, I attain levels of consciousness, which increasingly operate outside of space and time. What do I mean by that? I'll, I'll, I'll follow intuition. I'll buy things I don't need thinking I need this but I think what but I like no I need it and then I'll find out later that I needed to give that to someone as a gift at exactly the right time or I needed it for some other reason and so it it it's it's something familiar to people on a spiritual path where you get this kind of intuitive guidance and you'll also witness seemingly impossible shifts in reality increasingly Thank you for explaining that in in simple terms. It's such a, a really a hard concept to grasp. We get so focused on what we perceive as our reality. You, uh, if someone's not liking the reality that they're experiencing or they have issues, I know you talk about finances and money. How can they move into a more desired reality? Yes. 
Well, I do have a book on that high energy money. Yes. And I, Congratulations. You know, yeah. Well, I want to mention it because it's this idea of um, being in relationship because everything, when we sometimes we get into a problematic relationship, we don't even know we're having a troubled relationship with money, or maybe we do. Uh, but it, and people might think it's a funny joke, like, well, ha ha, you know. But it's possible to get that kind of, to receive that kind of counseling for oneself by really going deeper into one's own beliefs and assumptions about prosperity in general, money in particular, and learning more about ourselves. Are, are we the kind of people that would like to just have money land into our bank accounts and our wallet when we need it? I'm great with that. So I get that one quite a bit. Um, other people feel like I need to work for this money and that's how I earn it. Okay, fine. And some invest. And so the book goes through these different pathways. But the most the reason I'm mentioning the book really is because it shows in a very detailed way some of the common beliefs that people hold at different levels of consciousness in themselves. And you can recognize them um, like money is the root of all evil or um, I'll never have enough, those kind of things. They kind of center into certain energy centers in ourselves. And so when we recognize that, we can take that belief that we notice this one's problematic. It's uh, something that I need to maybe take a look at. And so you can reverse those beliefs and create very specific targeted um, healing affirmations that can be extremely positive, especially when you take them into your being and you really honestly uh, ask yourself, what if money comes to me effortlessly and easily? You know, what? And it can be a little bit stressful to even entertain such a opposing viewpoint at first, but um, through relaxing and just becoming aware of how you're feeling. And I, I again mentioned the book because it's packed with lots of examples where people really are getting money miracles. And so that talks to your subconscious and you start feeling like, well, this may be doable. And maybe you do remember times that you've had money show up and you didn't think about it till you saw that particular experience described. So those are many ways we can do this just by becoming open to the possibility. And I've got a free newsletter too, where I share all kinds of reality shift experiences. I will put a link to your site in the show notes. So it's almost clearing blockages, being aware of the emotional blockages that we have, what, whether it's money or anything else. And you also mentioned how good can it get, which is an incredible phrase. Um, is it is it just that conscious intention as well that propels our reality to change or what we perceive as change? It it, it um, in a sh I guess the short answer is kind of yes um, mostly, uh, but it has a lot to do with our levels of self. So where people often run into feeling tangled up in their in their um, chaos, their internal chaos, when they start going on that meditative journey and they start noticing, I think I am the root of the problem. <laughs> it, it, it's not the end of the world, but it can feel troublesome. Um, but that's the journey of recognizing there are many levels of ourselves and some of our higher levels of self desire for us to learn by experience, um, really going into things. I think some of us feel like, okay, we've had enough and <laughs> look at the experiences should be sufficient right now for me to have learned whatever it is. If you suspect that a series of life circumstances are conspiring seemingly against you, but but then you open it up and say, well, maybe there's something that I can, maybe there's a gift. Maybe there's something I can learn. What is that? How good can this get in terms of what I can learn from and grow? Those are great questions. That develops one's own intentionality. We are causal agents with many levels of causal agency. And so those higher levels are going to put us into situations and not prevent situations that, that our higher levels know that we need in order to become more compassionate, more kind, more loving. Um, that's how I see it. I see that it's a, a learning journey, very spiritual journey. So for me, this is a very spiritual thing. And so I'm, I'm not one to say like, oh, just manifest anything you desire, anything you think you want. Um, I would instead recommend learn to appreciate these levels of self and get to know your higher levels of self as well as possible. 
It's interesting because it's a very popular term, you know, manifesting the life you desire. But also, I hear, from what I understand, you talk about moving away from victim consciousness. I, I create everything. I'm not a victim. And how can I learn and grow from every experience, whether it's perceived as good or bad? Every It's an experience to grow from. And yes. what, what what can I get out of this and how good can it get? Right. This is a huge thing. And it's part of how we are ascending how we're leveling up with our consciousness uh, uh, usually we start life feeling pretty helpless most of us grow from infancy feeling vulnerable and therefore that's the introduction possibly to the victim experience where we feel um, sad because we can't do things we want to do we feel maybe traumatized it can go pretty deep but uh, but th that's just the beginning of this un unmarry merry-go-round <laughs> of roles so the victim triangle involves first the victim feeling. Then if we're fortunate enough to rise above those victimizing circumstances, some people get stuck in the next spot on the that merry-go-round and that would be rescuing. So people who feel the need to save others um, because basically they're afraid. They're, they're um, afraid of things going wrong. And that can then uh, unfortunately lead toward being a perpetrator, feeling that you alone know the correct answers for everyone, and you will make sure to enforce them. So it starts off, um, th these people often have a lot of anger. So when you notice that there's a tendency, and I'm not blaming any of these, I think most of us can relate to these roles on that merry go -round. And so we don't want to get stuck in the sadness, the grief of the victim, the fearful anxiety of the rescuer, or the anger of that um, perpetrator who just feels they're just making the world a safer place for everyone. We're just going to do it my way. You know? So, um, but anyway, it, when you realize I don't need to play any of these roles, and this is a process that takes time. It's a process of meditation. But when you start seeing what these roles look like, that's the beginning to start seeing it and recognize, wow, I don't want to be a victim. Um, but it can take a while sometimes for people to realize that they're, uh, caught up in that role and it doesn't usually help for someone to point it out to them um, usually this is a journey that we need to kind of start on our own because what happens when someone else tells you like you're you're being mean or i don't know it, it just doesn't usually work <laughs> we have good defenses let's put it that way we we do and it's we've all done it gosh i don't know about you i certainly have been a victim but uh, it's it's almost deflecting from what's going on internally within the self, within within the person, which stops you from growing as well. It's easy to blame others or unfair events. Yes. Yeah, and we don't even notice that we're doing it. So it's and this is where the drama starts, and this is where uh, psychological studies and transactional analysis uh, show that one person who's playing the victim. Um, it, it's a it's like a, a a dance an unhappy dance they're going to find someone who is playing the role of the persecutor and usually if they go into couples counseling or something they'll find um, that they can break free of it through just observing kind of taking us you know observing the whole process and learning to not be so hair trigger with the reactionary responses that we tend to have so this is where that meditation comes in handy. Even just writing in a journal, third person about yourself. Like today, Cynthia woke up. Today, Cynthia. It feels weird, but then, then you start noticing, oh, I get it. Cynthia is like a character in life, and I'm writing her story. That's right. I'm choosing how she engages with everything. That's right. And so this is the leveling up, and it just keeps going and going and going as we um, go on that spiritual path. It's a real deep self-analysis, which, gosh, is certainly challenging. Um, I'm just thinking more about shifting in and out of different realities. If if we change our reality, whether after a long process or a slow process, there is no time. Another incredibly hard concept. Does the self, for example, people often talk about this. If I change my reality rapidly does a, a a fraction of louisa what i term louisa have a parallel reality in that in a different experience 
Well, you could think of it like a daydream. Um, when I experience these reality shifts, I often get future memories. It's all, I, it's, I'll come back to what you're My favorite about. subject. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I swear this is not a detour. <laughs> when I get a future memory, I'm starting to get clues now. Like, um, like I can, because it feels like a memory. Um, like I was trying to find my husband's missing wallet. And I just got a memory like, well, you know, it's where it, it's, you know, it always, he, he always loses it in the same exact place in the car. I thought, right, right. Wait a minute. What? Always? I don't remember this at all. Like, oh, so I, it's like I've tagged, I found a sneaky way to tag future memories because it looks like a memory. Um, okay. So I, it's funny you love the subject. It I love it. So I think if you can remember the past, you can remember the future. As you said, there's times. Yes. yes and it ties in with your question. What about some fragment, some fractal piece of ourselves yes. that we may have left inadvertently behind in some other reality. They're there. Nothing's lost. Um, everything that we truly care the most about is the most real. And that's what that's why I believe when we pass on and we go, you know, from this life to an afterlife experience, it feels realer than real. And that's why some of us who have very high level meditations and experiences like that feel like I'm seeing colors that, that are realer than real. Like I'm seeing a heightened sense of reality. It's um, That's who we really are. And then all these other little fractal possible realities are like little threads of dreams and daydreams that we feel we most wish to explore. We're in all of them. Just like if you're doing a, a maze and you, do you try all the pathways? Sure. But which one do you remember the most? It would be the one that goes all the way through the maze. So... So we're uh, almost, in, oh gosh, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Sometimes if you ask how good can it get, you'll get those future memories and you'll just make those crazy twists and turns and go the fastest way out of that maze. Um, if that's what you need, if the best thing was to experience something, then you will, you know, it won't be the fastest way through the maze, but it'll be an amazing experience. So it's a conscious intention. And, and, and again, another hard concept, we're living in a, a dream a reality it's it's a dream we're almost writing our story we are and we can uh, through meditation learn to recognize other conscious agents which for me helps me get beyond the drama of those you know the victim persecutor um, <laughs> and rescuer roles because when we see that those are um, levels of conscious agency in other words people almost look like they're just sort of moving. Um, some people say non-player character, NPC. Um, other people say like they're sleepwalking. The Harry Potter books talk about muggles. Um, these concepts basically mean that someone's like hypnotized. I think Gurdjieff even talked about that, that people are largely unawake. And so what we're doing is recognizing that we can operate at a higher level of conscious agency and feel more fully alive in the process so it's these concepts go together interesting <clears throat> you've explained it very simply being a physicist but in three in a few simple steps for the audience to shift reality or to raise their vibration or consciousness or change the dream if they're not enjoying it what's your advice well um basically you want to start by knowing who you are and calming down because you don't want to be creating or manifesting from a place that's scared or sad or angry ironically so some people feel like but that's when i need it okay but you want to practice when you're feeling um, good when you're feeling fantastic people's energy tends to be the highest when they're in love um, pregnant mothers look like they're glowing I have a whole book about energy of this aura advantage, and I, it covers all sorts of ways to raise that energy. But the basics are you want to eat well, sleep well, take good care of yourself, and do things like meditate, keep yourself very positive. Um, all these things are extremely important. And then once you've got that energy and you're not operating from some lower vibrational register of you know feeling scared, sad, or angry, then it's um, then I would recommend ask how good can it get. Focus on an area of interest. Uh, I like to leave things open ended and kind of surprise me. <laughs> I love that. Um, so if you're up for that, you can do that. Other people have something specific in mind, like I just need this much money for some reason. 
Um, and so now we're getting into the money with the relationship with money and all that baggage. But what, if you have faith, there's a fast shortcut there. You can just know that the universe, nature, source, creator, God, divine energy does the heavy lifting. All you need to do is show up and stay uh, energized, relaxed, grounded. So that's your homework. It's just like stay in that and, and then just keep raising the vibrational. Stay in the highest level vibrational state you can while knowing that what you need will be yours and you're not giving it a timeline. You're just no drama. That's a drama. You don't, you don't want any timeline drama. <laughs> like it has to be by next mm -hmm. Tuesday. Well, nature knows that. And if it's meant to be, it will be. And otherwise some amazing things will happen. Kind of like this whole watch this um, experience can begin. So that would be the shortcut that I recommend. And I recommend this for clients as well. And sometimes people just need reminder after reminder. It's basically let go, let God or let nature, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it cares. But there is this sense of ultimate consciousness, this oneness consciousness that is um, so, so divinely guiding all of us and so capable of bringing anything through. And, and I, it does yeah. work with someone who has that kind of faith, frankly. I love that. And it's so simple. Just a quick question. Some people say uh, to it's better to be specific for what you want, but you're suggesting go for the lucky dip. <laughs> yeah. Um, the specific stuff, it's like, a, that's good. I, mean, I think that's good baby steps. It gets people going. And so then they, they can actually see like, oh, that worked. Um, there is a danger. There's dangers with every level of consciousness. The danger with that one would be the usual human danger of pride and, versus humility. And so as long as you're able to do that and keep, maintain humility, and not become like, oh, I am the great manifesting poobah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's <laughs> that would be my big cautionary warning with that. Otherwise, it's fine. Um, it's a good start. I, I don't consider that to be a higher level representation of what this is. It's it's just so interesting how well the mind plays, not plays tricks on us, but potentially because to recognize that we're in a dream it's a hard concept well i can feel myself and i can touch the walls and nothing really is real but it's 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 boggling for the mind to comprehend and the no time yes and, and my book reality shifts gets into that dreamlike state of things uh, that may be a bit rough for someone who's seriously heavily into their left brain if they're super analytical and rational then i would recommend quantum jumps instead where it just dives in with um, studies and research and so forth and people feel, and the, and the chapters get wilder as you go, but they can stop before they get to the last chapter. <laughs> it's like, this is really crazy uh, because it's, it's questions and answers and people really, really having some high level manifesting questions. And so if you start there, it can be like too much, too fast. Um, so I think that's how I feel about this. Visualize what you want. Sure, that, if that works for you, that's a good start. But some people notice at some point, like this is not making me ultimately very happy. I'm getting everything I ask for, but it's not taking me to a feeling of accomplishment, success, meaning, passion, purpose. You know, there's something it's maybe in, indefinable, undescribable. So that's why I strongly prefer this other path. There's always more. Just a few more questions. I mean, gosh, it's so fascinating. <laughs> A question which I always like to ask, in your opinion, well, why are we having this human experience, this dream? What is the point or the purpose of it? Uh, we're here to notice that we're doing that. And that's what it looks like to me. And to wake up within the dream, to share this experience of enlightenment as we become more enlightened. And so it's a continuing process, but we have it already. We are a light. We're of the light. We're of consciousness. And to share this with others. And we can see it in things like these reality shifts, these quantum jumps, even in the Mandela effect, we're together collectively. We're, we're noticing that we remember things differently and things are different than what they seem. So it's a huge awakening that's happening right now on the planet. And it was actually foretold um, through many, many different traditions, expecting that there would be a time as we pass from one world to another um, not so much one reality, because some people say, I want to go back to my original reality. I miss, you know, some the things were better then. <laughs> I'll just mm -hmm. keep it simple. But 
actually we're moving through multitudes of realities all the time we always were we still are and it's it's a natural process and it's a collective awakening so this is this can be a very beautiful time it can again goes back to intention and perception and your belief is we transition from our physical body and are reborn into this human experience Again, well, this is, again my experience again. as a conscious creator is that there's a part of me that's beyond space time. I'm intimately familiar with it with all the quantum jumping and reality shifting and the work I do as a coach. And so it's reinforced for me constantly. Plus, I meditate and I keep seeing that. So, and also, I had a pre birth memory that I, I knew I was conscious and sentient before I was born. So, with all of that, it's hard for me to refute this. So, for me personally, but I don't push it on anyone. Now, this would be my spiritual uh, feelings and my perception of reality, which doesn't mean it's right. It's just right for me for right now. But yeah, with that awareness that my consciousness, it transcends time and space like yours does. And that there are levels of what I consider myself, which I'm capable of developing in this lifetime. So I can become, and that's why I'm choosing the spiritual path of being in service and moving toward kindness and love and so forth. Uh, these things matter tremendously uh, to overcome all sorts of fears and to maintain uh, an ever-growing faith and reverence and, and love. So it's, it's a profound journey. Uh, it but sure to me, it is. Yeah. yeah, this is what it's really about. Your pre-birth experience, were you consciously aware of your choice to return to the your human incarnation? Yeah, to me, it felt um, not so much. It felt like I got pushed. I, I love being between lives. <laughs> it's kind Gosh. of like, I'm just like hanging it. I'm kind of like hanging on like God's robes, if you will. You know, but to me, God is just a presence. It's more of a, a feeling and knowing that's a lot, so much love. Yeah, I, I felt like this is a terrible mistake for me to remember that and be in this, on this world. I just thought there'd been a mistake. So um, there, there's a book that contains many of these stories including mine, which the chap my chapter was Whoops, Wrong Planet, and the author that published it is Diane Brandon. I love that book. That, to me, it feels like home. When I read that book, I read all the chapters because these are stories from people like me that remember. And it's from all walks of life, all religions. It's not a, it's not a religion thing. It's just knowing that we, we existed before we were born. And we're just laughing and I feel like crying at the same time. It brings so much love, you know, for me to remember that so i felt like it was a mistake but <clears throat> subsequently learned no that was important for me to not forget that at this time we need people who have this kind of faith so it's not just me lots of lots of us have this and as i think as people hear about it it might hopefully trigger something in a good way activate something like oh yeah i am sentient i am conscious i, I transcend space and time i'm infinite i'm eternal and I'm not saying I'm God. I don't feel that way. Some people say I am one. Well, to me, I would say God is that oneness consciousness. And I like to hang out with that. So I think we're on that journey. Interesting. Yeah. Fascinating. I, have, I haven't read the book, but I will definitely look it up. Um, gosh, on a final note, you've already mentioned it, but in, you know, perhaps a few points. How can we live our best life, our most aligned life? productive life for ourselves and for others in this dream that we're living yeah start by being kind to your, to ourselves forgiving of ourselves i think people are very hard on themselves and and this is usually where all the trouble starts uh, ironically <laughs> so just really uh, love ourselves um, be that kind of love from humility and kindness for oneself is transformative at a very profound deep level and it sounds so simple, but, um, I, you know, I like to ask how good can it get? Mm -hmm. You can also ask how good can I get? And that means um, loving of oneself, kind to oneself, um, reverent for oneself. Um, you'll start eating better. You'll start taking better care of yourself. It'll become possible to break free of seemingly impossible patterns and to feel like you can be your own best friend and then start finding it starts with yourself and then it can it can build it can grow and you will find your home your friends your 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 team it'll all come to you 
Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, Cynthia, if there's, if there's something you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience that I haven't asked you, please go ahead. Well, I, I, I'd like to uh, invite people, of course, to um, subscribe to my newsletter because I do. What I like to do is share these firsthand reports. I have, I think, the biggest compendium and um, online archive of firsthand reality shift reports. It's uh, Some people ask, where is it? And I know it's an archaic website. Um, but I did right from the start share where, where the location was, where in the world the experience happened. It's written from a firsthand reporting basis, and it's um, it's wonderfully inspiring, inspirational to see that these things are happening just everywhere. And you know, people are going farther in less time, experiencing miraculous healings cars that, that are broken or stopped on the road or out of gas, they can go, they'll start. Um, similarly, people are miraculously healed. And these things are happening just constantly. So you can subscribe to the newsletter. All the archives are also on the Reality Shifters website. So you can actually read every single issue. Fantastic. Well, Cynthia, Sue Larson, gosh, what a, a wonderful light worker you are in the world. And thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. It's really been so uh, thank, interesting. Thank you for everything you're doing. It was my, my honor, my pleasure, Louisa. It's thank a pleasure you. for me. Thanks, Cynthia. Bye-bye. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.